Hey guys, welcome back to another video. What we're going to be talking about today is why programming is so hard, right? So first off, it's not that hard, um, but there are a couple of roadblocks, especially mental ones that you have to get through. And if you, and if you don't, then you really will have a hard time. You're going to think it's too hard. You're going to think it's too complicated. You're going to get imposter syndrome out the ass and think that you're not, no, you're not smart enough, right? So as long as you can overcome a couple of things, you should be good to go. So one thing that I've often hear is that, you know, only certain types of people can code that you have to have a certain brain or a certain like you have to be really smart to code, whatever. That's all a myth. That's not true. All it takes is really persistence. Now, what I really saw this at school with myself, my friends, you know, my peers that especially when we started, everything was super complicated, but all it took was persistence. I, I wanted to give up tons of times. I considered switching degrees and all that stuff. But as long as you uh, keep going, you keep trying, you, trial and error, you keep failing. I said this many times on my channel before, you know, failing is incredible. As long as you keep trying, then you should be good to go. If you're new here, what we talk about is how to become a software engineer, how to start coding. And I just try to make your journey into becoming a software engineer as easy and as smooth as possible, whether that's, you know, switching career paths or just pursuing it from the get go. If you like the content, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you very much. I love you. I'm super grateful and I'll keep doing my best to make great content. So yeah, like I said before, when I started, it was super complicated, you know, especially when you're learning about stuff like pointers and, you know, uh, memory allocation, all this kind of stuff, then you really get overwhelmed very quickly. And it, what you have to understand is it's not that hard. It's not impossible. And you don't have to be a special person to start coding. What you do have to have, though, is like three different skills, I would say. One, you have to have the coding ability, right? That's a given. You have to be able to code. You have to give you have to put the time in to learn a language or learn the syntax of, of different languages or, you know, you just the technical side you have to learn. And that's just a skill like any other, right? But that's not the hardest thing you have to have. What I would say is one of the more difficult things to learn is problem solving, right? You have to have like an algorithmic way of looking at things. You have to get a problem and not only understand the problem, but be able to come up with several solutions using different like techniques. You have to you have to learn how to apply a lot of different concepts and think in, a, in an abstract way so that you can problem solve different like different kind of difficult things that you encounter. And the third thing that you need is a good communication ability, right? Where this is most important uh, is probably interviews. You have to be able to communicate your thoughts and communicate your ideas, especially when solving technical interviews. And, you know, you have to explain your thought process and explain a solution. You want to be able to communicate very well, not only not only for interviews, though, but but uh, you're probably going to be working with a team when you code. So, like I said before, collaboration is the foundation of computer science, and it's very important to be able to collaborate well. You want to be able to talk to your teammates, be able to communicate your ideas and also be able to understand what they're saying. Right. And also another reason why communication is so important is because you have to you have to be able to communicate technical things to people with a non-technical background. I've mentioned this before in another video, but if you're able to do that, that makes you stand out so much because a lot of engineers lack this ability. I would say that most engineers have two out of the three of them. Most people know how to co most of them know how to code, but they either don't know how to communicate well or they don't know how to problem solve well. Right. And problem solving is definitely one thing that took me the most to learn and it was the hardest thing for me to learn. So you keep these in mind. You always work on your communication, your problem solving, your technical ability. You're good to go. The other thing, the other reason why programming is so hard is because it's one of the rare uh, fields where you have to sit down in front of a computer for hours at a time. Right. I mentioned this before. You don't think about it, but it's really difficult, you know, to be focused for three hours sitting in front of a computer, solving a hard problem. It, it really takes a lot of focus and a lot of it's very mentally taxing and it's very physically taxing as well. So a lot of people are just able, you know, to do it for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and then they stop, they give up, they want to do something else. But if you want to really be a successful uh, software engineer and you want to really learn how to program, you're going to have to learn to sit in front of a computer, focus for hours at a time and really get into that flow state where you're able to be the most productive. Now, one of the main reasons programming is so difficult is because it requires abstract thought. Now, we rarely have to look at a situation, look at something and then d design a whole system around it. Right. We I don't think we've been taught to think in an abstract way, especially not before college. I don't think before university I had a single abstract thought like in my in, in my entire life. Right. You, you, you learn to think about ways in a very linear way and you learn to look at things at face value and not think about the broader picture. But for programming, you really want to have an abstract way of thinking. You want to be able to generalize like through different concepts and take what you know between different concepts and combine them together. 
you want to be able to make like relationships between different things that you know and for example build a whole system out of like let's say out of something like as simple as categorizing clothes right if you think about a shirt you know what color is it what size is it do you need to to have, give it a color do you need to give it a size what differentiates a shirt between pants and is would it be easier to just make one object that represents clothing instead of one object for a shirt one object for pants where are you storing these uh this these this clothing and how are you organizing them all you know if you can learn to think about everything you do in such an abstract way then it makes it makes it a lot easier to problem solve one and it makes you a lot better of a programmer another thing another thing is that you're never really done learning one of the big things that software engineers have is that they never feel like satisfied when they're learning right so most of the time when you're learning a tech, you don't know everything. You learn what you need to know and then that's it. And then you like, you know, implement it into whatever project you're working on. So what usually happens then is, you know, usually, you know, like 5% of a technology, maybe 10%. So you never really get that fulfillment of, okay, I'm done learning. You're never done learning as a software engineer. And that's kind of a diff difficult concept to grasp. A lot of people like learning something and then being done with it and moving on. You also have to be able to focus your learning, to concentrate your learning so that you don't waste time, right? programming is really a battle against time you're trying to learn as much as you can in the shortest amount of time because it's so easy to to you know get distracted and start learning all this garbage that you don't need to know like oh my god look at this um assembly code and you try to optimize an assembly code or something maybe you want to build an os like who knows but it's there's so many different topics that it's so easy to get distracted you have to really be able to focus and concentrate your learning and then just to end off you you know what you want to focus on is do you really want to code? Do you think it's cool? Do you think it's interesting or you're just doing it for the money? Right. I won't I will admit that like when I started, I, w I thought it was a good you know career to get into to get into and it'll make me a lot of money. But as I as I went through, you know, school and stuff like that, I actually I really started enjoying it. And right now I'm super grateful that I'm working as a software engineer. Right. It's definitely one of the best decisions I've ever made. So you really have to think about what your reasons are for becoming a software engineer. And then what I want to finish off finish up with is the imposter syndrome right so when you're learning to code especially when you're just interviewing you're gonna think that it's a lot more difficult than it really is now the reason for this is that because when you're interviewing the questions they ask you when you're when you're doing the interview have nothing to do with the day-to-day -day activity of a software engineer, right? All these algorithms, all these binary search trees, all this garbage that they ask you in an interview, you're never gonna you're never gonna do any of that on the job. Never ever ever. So people do interviews and then they fail them and then they think oh i'm not good enough and then they give up but what you have to realize is that the skill set you need for passing interviews and the skill set you need for being a successful software engineer are completely different so if you can just practice get good at passing interviews and then it's really kind of easier to code as as a, as a full-time job than it is during an interview process at least that's what i found and that's what i think so guys i hope you guys uh you know listen to these tips i really try to make it as as relevant as possible and i try to help you guys out especially if you're just starting out so I hope you have enjoyed. Uh, leave a comment if you think there's anything I got wrong or anything you disagree with or anything you want me to cover in the future. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. Take it easy and don't forget to enjoy your coding.